In this video, we are going to discuss about the validity of this argument. So the argument is as follows. If I study, then I will not fail in maths. Second statement is if I do not play basketball, then I will study. And third is, but I failed in maths. The conclusion of this argument is I must have played basketball. So how are we going to solve this? So I will mark the sentences now. If I study, I'm going to call P as I study. The second statement is I will fail in maths. I'm going to call that as my statement Q. So I will fail. The third is I do not play a basketball. That I'm going to call. R I'm going to call as playing basketball. So I play basketball. And uh, now I'm, we are going to write all these three things. The first line can be written as the first statement can be written as P implies I will not fail means P implies negation Q. The second is if I do not play basketball means it is negation R implies then I will study. So this is P. And the third is I failed in maths means it is Q. And the conclusion is I must have played basketball means it is R. So we have to check whether this argument is valid or not. OK, so I will consider the given statements. First this P implies negation Q. Then second is negation R implies P. And the third is Q. OK, now I will try to simplify them. Now if I take the contrapositive of the first statement, so I'm using here contrapositive. If I take the contrapositive of the first one, I'm going to give Q implies negation P. And second, I'm going to keep it as it is negation R implies P. And third Q also I'm going to keep it as it is. Now if I look at the first and the last and if I write them together, I'm going to write them together. I'm going to write them nearby. So I will write it as Q implies negation P. Sorry, neg yes, and then then I'm going to write Q and then I'm going to write negation R implies P. So I just brought this Q in the second place. Now I look at them carefully. Here I can apply modus ponens. And when I apply modus ponens here, Q and Q implies negation P will give me negation P. And this negation R implies P is as it is. Here again, I'm going to use more, uh, contrapositive. So when I use contrapositive here, this will become negation P comma. This will become negation P implies R. And therefore by modus ponens again, I'm going to get negation P with negation P implies R will give me R. So this is what we wanted. So the given argument is what the given argument is valid. Let me go to the next question. I'm going to check the validity. If it rains, I'm going to call P it rains. Then I wear a raincoat. I'm calling it Q. So the first one is basically P implies Q. Second, if it shines R, then I do not need a sweater. So need a sweater, I'm going to call S. So do not need a sweater. I'm going to call negation S. The third is either it rains or it shines. For rains, we have written P. So P or it shines. For shines, I have written R. So it is P or R. The last one is I do not need a sweater. Uh, I'll just make a correction here. I need a sweater. Let's just let me please make a correction here. I need a sweater. So. 
here I'm going to have a S directly because need a sweater is S. So I have a S here and the conclusion is I wear a raincoat. So I wear a raincoat is Q. So wearing a raincoat is Q. So we have to check whether this thing is valid or not. Whether this argument is valid or not. So I will just consider the given things to me. So I'm given P implies Q. Then I'm given R implies negation S. Uh, P or S. Sorry, P or R. And then I'm given an S. OK. Now this P or R, I will convert it into implication. So if I want to convert it into implication. We know that A implies B is equivalent to what? Negation A or B. Right, so I will use this. So P implies Q. Then I have R implies negation S. And here I'm going to use this implication, this equivalence, and though I can write it. So I can write it as negation P implies R, and this is S. Okay. Now, if I look carefully here, uh, at the second and the third, this is saying negation P implies R and R implies negation S. So I'll write it in graph. So I have negation P implies R and I have R implies negation S. So by hypothetical syllogism, I'm going to get negation P implies negation S. Right, so first and the third. So P implies Q. I'm getting negation P implies negation S. And the last S is as it is. So what have I used here? I have used here hypothetical syllogism. Right. Now, now I want to convert. I want to further simplify this. So here I will take contraposition. Here if I take the contrapositive of this statement. So negation P implies negation S. The contrapositive of that will become S implies P. So when I write the thing on the next page, I'm going to get P implies Q. And I'm going to get S implies P. And I have S at the end. If I look at this here now. So what am I getting here by modus ponens? By modus ponens, I can write as P implies Q is as it is. S and S implies P will give you a P. Right? That is modus ponens. So this P is because of modus ponens. And I again apply modus ponens. So modus ponens P and P implies Q is going to give me Q. So the given argument is a valid argument. Okay. Let me go to one more problem now. Either John will run or Mary will speak. So that is clearly P or Q. So that is P or Q. Second is if Mary speaks. If Mary speaks, then Fred will fly. If Mary speaks, Mary will speak as Q. So Q implies Fred will fly as R. And the moon is purple. So and moon is purple moon is purple is uh, i'm saying s so moon is purple is s so q implies r and s the third is the moon is not purple means it is negation s because moon is purple i'm calling as r okay and the last is so the conclusion of this is is that john will run john will run is given by what John is run by, is given by P. So we have to check whether this argument is a valid argument or not. So I will consider the left hand side now. So I have P or Q. And Q implies R and S. And I have negation S here. OK, now. If I try to convert this into a implication again i'll recall a implies b is equivalent to what negation a or b 
so what will be the equivalence of p implies q so you see b is the same so q is the same or sorry implicate implies this p will become negation p because it is a becomes negative of a right second is uh, q implies r and s i'm going to keep that as it is and the last is also negation is i'm going to keep critically as it is so so what i have here now is um, if i look at this and this together it is negation p implies q and q implies r and s so by hypothetical syllogism i can say that negation p is implying r and s and i have a negation s as it is i'm continuing this line again on the next page so i was on this line negation p implies r and s comma s by simplification i know that r and s can be either written as r or simplification says that r and s can be either written as r or you can even write it as s whatever you think is useful for us right now okay so already i have a s in the picture here so i will keep s and i will omit r from the scenario so this will be negation p implies s and you have a s here correct uh, you have a you have a negation s so you have negation s you have negation s negation s okay and when i use the contrapositive of this so here i have used simplification right simplification that r and s can be replaced by either r or s so i have replaced it by s so if i write a contrapositive of this the contrapositive of this will be negation s implies p and negation s is as it is and now i fit this into modus ponens so by modus ponens i can simply say that the conclusion is what the conclusion is p and that is what we actually wanted we wanted that the conclusion should be p that is john will run okay so this argument is also a this argument is also a valid argument